Hi guys, how are we? How are we doing? I haven't talked to you guys in a hot minute because I've been pre-recording things. I had I had quite the busy moment, week, month. I just got back from a trip. Um, I went to Mexico with my family. It was great. It was amazing. It was awesome. I've never been to any place like that in my life. It was like an all-inclusive hotel, just probably, you know, top three best vacations I've ever been on. But before I, you know, deep dive in today's topic, I wanted to be honest because I feel like that's important. I'm already honest about, you know, how I'm feeling with whatever I'm talking about. So I might as well just lay it all out. I've already recorded this episode. I already recorded and talked about this topic and it wasn't up to par. I was editing it and listening to it and I had recorded it, I think at like six in the morning because I couldn't sleep and I had just eaten breakfast and I was still, you know, groggy and... I was listening to it and I had to do so much editing and I got 12 minutes into it and I was like, I cannot do this because I was just rambling and talking in circles. I wasn't making sense, like genuinely not making sense for a couple minutes straight. And today's topic is something that I love to talk about and I didn't want to put out an episode about one of my favorite topics and it'd be shitty. So I decided uh, to re-record it because I want it to be at its fullest potential. I'm still going to talk about the same things, but I'm, you know, I, I've lived a whole day. It's it's nighttime now. And I feel like I have my thoughts gathered, especially after, you know, talking for however long. I also realized I say, you know, a lot whenever I was editing that episode. So I deeply apologize and I try to cut out them as much as possible. But with that being said, I do apologize for the many times I either say like, um, and you know. So thus, let's begin. Today I'm talking about being single. As I mentioned earlier, I had just gotten back from a all-inclusive trip to Mexico and it was one of those secrets resorts. So very romantic, just it, it was full of couples and married couples and older people who were even, you know, dating. There were people that were getting married. I was surrounded by couples even my family. I was surrounded by them for a whole week. And I am also the only single person in my family, which, uh, (laughs) you know, you can take that either way. Like, oh, this sucks. I'm the only person who doesn't have a significant other. Or you could be like, hell yeah, I'm living large. So take that any way you want. Every day is different for me. So I wanted to talk to you about this experience being surrounded by non-single people. I literally, the only people that were not single, which I also didn't know, but their significant other wasn't there, were like the staff workers. And so I also, side note, I think they're trained to flirt with you. I swear to God. I swear to God, I don't know if I just think they're flirting with me, but some, my family agreed that they, they get a little flirty. So since I had recorded this original episode before Mexico, I was so passionate about fuck men, fuck love, uh, fuck relationships to a certain extent, you know, and just, you know, being very, very pro-single. 
and I'm still like that way to a certain extent, but I feel like it's almost changed and given me a little bit of a perspective. I don't know. Catch back with me in a week. I might change my mind whenever I am back at home and back in my normal environment and I enjoy being single just as much as before Mexico. We don't know that yet. I don't know that yet. But seeing all of the people who were on their honeymoons and just got married and even just people who have been dating for a couple months or a couple years or whatever, it got me really excited to get into a relationship, but not in the sense where I'm like, I need to find someone right now. I need to get into a relationship right this second. It wasn't like that. It was, you know, this form of excitement and thrill that I'm feeling for myself in the future. It was, it's so weird because I still feel that way. I mean, I just got back today. But seeing all of that gave me some form of hope. I don't know. It was so weird. I saw all these beautiful engagement rings and just how romantic everything was. And I was like, you know what? That sounds so nice. That that would be really nice. Which is a point I want to bring up. That can be my first point. Being single doesn't mean you have to be lonely. I think a lot of people get lonely and alone confused because um, you can be single and alone, but not lonely. And I understand it, it, like, lonely stems from the same word of alone, but I think it just has a bad connotation to it. It's like, oh, I'm alone. This is so sad. I am so depressed. This is blah, 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 blah. But I think we need to start looking at it in a different perspective because... Being alone is not a bad thing. I guess the feeling of being lonely sucks. And it's important to also recognize that being single does get lonely sometimes. But I think there's a big difference with, you know, the connotation and the way we use the word alone. Because whenever I was on that trip, I didn't feel lonely because I was surrounded by so many people. But I was just more hyper aware that I didn't have a significant other to text or to send pictures to or, you know, to look forward to come back to. I don't even have like a cat or anything. I don't even have fish to come home to. My dad's not even here. It's my dog's not even here. My mom and um, stepdad stayed in Mexico for another week. So I'm literally just home alone right now, which is fine. It allows me to record this podcast episode and not get bothered. Anywho, being alone and being single is a good thing. Like, I enjoy being single. Although it did suck for a week, it did suck for a week of being surrounded by people who were in love and everything. It it did suck a little bit, but now that I'm sitting here and I'm talking about it and I'm reflecting, it's it's really not a bad thing. My second point kind of goes along with this. Whenever you're single, you learn how to sit with your thoughts and you're forced to. Now, yeah, you can text your every thought to your mom or your best friend or whatever. You post about it. I mean, I do. I talk to you guys about a lot of my thoughts And I still text my besties very frequently, but to a certain extent, you know, they also have their own lives and you just got to sit with your thoughts, which also, again, is not a bad thing. It's okay to sit with your thoughts, the good and the bad. So whenever you sit with your thoughts, you start spiraling a little bit. I know I do. And it's almost like a therapy session, especially it's it's good whenever you kind of get it out. And you reflect on past relationships. You reflect on how you acted, how the other person acted, why it happened, how you reacted whenever it ended, um, the good and the bad. And you think about these things, especially whenever you're feeling lonely and you're physically alone as well. 
it can suck and it can definitely bring out some like shitty emotions but like you're supposed to feel them you can't just push them down because what does that get you probably not very far in life to be honest guys whenever you sit alone with your thoughts you learn more about yourself and how to avoid previous situations that were bad. For example, you're reflecting on a past relationship and you're thinking about one of those times where you got into a big fight and you realize the way you reacted is not the way you would want someone to react towards you. More specifically, if you're always trying to get the last word and you're you're never trying to see the other person's point of view that's where you got to stop yourself and say okay that's not an okay thing to do and for the next relationship i'm in however long from now we're gonna avoid doing that and just those kind of moments where you're reflecting on it are super important and being single allows you to do that way more often Granted, you can still do that while being in a relationship. Absolutely. But there's something about being single where you're genuinely forced to just think about these things because you don't have a relationship to keep your mind preoccupied. You're just forced to think about previous relationships or how you would want to be treated in a relationship if you've never been in one before. Point number three. I think. I don't know. Whatever we're on. Whenever you're single, you have more time for your friends and for hobbies and trying out new things, which is one of the best parts about life is you get to do so many things whenever you're single because it's just you. And I'm talking about hobbies like by yourself. For example, I play guitar. Whenever I'm single, and I'm feeling bored, and if I were in a relationship, I would probably go hang out with my boyfriend. But whenever I'm single, I'm forced to, like, either hang out with my friends, which a lot of my friends have boyfriends, so they might be hanging out with their boyfriends. So then I'm forced to resort back to myself, being self-sufficient. And if you don't have hobbies, this is a great time to learn new hobbies. You can pick up an instrument. Like I said, I play guitar. I've been playing guitar so much more whenever I am single than I do when I'm in a relationship because I just forget about it. I'm preoccupied with my significant other and hanging out with them. You can learn how to color, not color, but like paint and draw and learn a new recipe. And yes, some of you may argue you can do that with a significant other, but it's not as fun. Because you need to take this time for yourself, whether you're single or not. Learning new things, you can Duolingo. Guys, download Duolingo and learn a new fucking language. Hello? You're still on your phone if you have a phone addiction. Just go on Do Not Disturb and go on Duolingo and learn a new fucking language. Or new recipe if you enjoy cooking. Um, You can become a plant parent hi, um, that's me. And I love it. It gives you something to take care of. That's another thing my therapist told me. Whenever you're single, because I really, really struggled to be okay with like not having that constant love coming in from something else. My therapist told me, you know, if you can't get a cat, because my mom won't let me yet. If you can't get, you know, a cat or a dog or whatever, something that can love you unconditionally, give, get something you can love. Because I'm someone who has a lot of love to give. I love love. I love giving love and I love taking love. So I started getting plants and they're my babies. I take care of them and they still need me. They can't cuddle me like a cat could. But at the end of the day, they still need me to survive. So it's a sense of something to take care of. So again, to wrap up this point, you know, during this time of being single, you have more time 
for friends and hobbies and learning new things and taking care of new things and more time to invest in yourself instead of investing in a relationship. Next point, if you're my age, so I'm 22. So if you're like, you know, between the ages of, I don't know, 18 to 23, whatever it may be, or, you know, honestly, probably up until 30. Men at this age don't know how to be in a relationship properly. I am going to generalize. Obviously, there are some out there that have a better idea of how to actually treat a person in a relationship. But I'm speaking from experience. Not that I have a shit ton of experience, but I've encountered a couple of a couple of men in in my lifetime and also you know taking my friends experiences too with men um and again let's obviously I feel like I need to point this out real quick I'm going to be talking about men you can envision any of this in whoever you like but since I have dated men that's what I will be talking about yeah so At this age, men don't know how to emotionally and mentally understand a woman. They don't know at this age how to comprehend the way women think, feel, react. Like, the empathy men have between the ages of 13 and 30 is extremely low. Am I wrong? Because if you think about it, little kids have some form of empathy, but as soon as, as soon as their balls drop, (laughs) as soon as they hit puberty, it's on a down, downhill from, from there. It is just a complete whirlwind of fuckery because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. And I want to say, and 30 is being generous, guys. Listen, 30 is generous, but between the ages, okay, I'll say 27, 28, 29, 30, men kind of, you know, have more experience. They know how to properly treat a woman. But yeah, at this age, it's honestly, to save a couple heartbreaks, you're better off just being single. Not to discourage anyone, not to make anyone break up with anyone here, but likelihood that you're gonna, you know, end up with the person that you're dating in high school or even like beginning of college or just college in general is kind of low because those guys it it gets complicated with the the careers you graduate then what the fuck do you do and you got the long distance and then you got there's a lot of factors a lot going against you not to be a debbie downer sorry guys but it's the truth and some things and sometimes it does work out But my main point here is that men our age are, like me and you, I'm assuming you're probably my age, don't know how to, like, I don't know, commit. (laughs) To put it plainly, they don't really know how to commit. They don't know how to properly tend to a woman and, you know, sympathize, empathize with them among other things. So it's it's like, why would I waste my time being with a man who's not gonna, you know, feel empathy? So, and even if they do feel empathy, it's really not, it's like, it's like the basic form of empathy. And it's like, okay, you know, you're saying you're sorry and this and that, but it's like, eh, do you really, do you really get it? I don't know. So that's another, that's a big point for me. It's like, these guys just, I've learned to not settle. I've settled in the past for guys and it has just been horrible. That's whenever I reflect and I'm like, what the fuck was I doing? Why on God's green earth was I settling for a guy who made time for me once a week because he was prioritizing other things over me when I was prioritizing him over everything. And he also just like, 
gave me the bare minimum. So why would I, would I settle for that whenever I know there's someone else out there for me that will dedicate time to me and make time for me and be able to balance his other aspects of life too? So it's like, that's kind of difficult for men in college. Let's be honest. Going along with that kind of, whenever you're single, you can also do whatever the fuck you want. And you can take that in many ways. You can do whatever. You can go wherever. You can do whoever, whomever, whoever, whenever you're single. So there's this sense of freedom and liberty whenever you're single. And not to say you don't have freedom and liberty whenever you're in a relationship, but you definitely have a shit ton more whenever you're single. And I don't know if I'm really ready to give that up yet because I enjoy it so much. Not that you have to give up freedom, but you guys know what I'm trying to say here. There's this sense of, you know, spontaneousness whenever you're single because it's like you can you can go on as many you can go on a date every day of the week and meet new people whether or not you vibe with them or attracted to them you know that's up in the air however you get to just like dick around like hi why would I waste my time with a guy who isn't emotionally stable and able to feel empathy whenever I could just you know fart around, get free meals, meet new people, have a good time, crack a joke or two. It's like a win-win. Next point kind of goes with it and kind of goes with the previous point too. When you're in a relationship, you're more likely to cry because it's another person impacting your feelings and sometimes they clearly, men this age, are going to say some mean shit because they don't think before they speak. And (laughs) let me just go on a tangent real quick. Going along with the empathy thing and just like thinking before they speak or do shit. Somehow in this world of hookup culture, men have just universally agreed that ghosting is okay for whatever fucking reason not quite sure what happened there they had a meeting and they just decided yeah you know if we're not vibing out with someone we're just gonna completely jump off the face of the earth you could be talking for weeks and men think nothing of it and just completely stop talking to you i'm talking i have literally talked to people and just nothing. It's not even like they started slowing down with their responses. No, I'm talking it's a Wednesday morning and I hear nothing for the rest of eternity. It's happened, people. It has happened, I swear to God. So that was just how to be a little tangent about ghosting. If you've ever ghosted someone, (sighs) fuck you. I'll say it, but please just don't do it again. Just be a respectful person and be like, hey, not feeling this. I'm really sorry. I hope you, you know, I didn't want to ghost you or waste your time. Really sorry. uh, But I hope you have, I hope you have a great life. Whatever happened to that? (laughs) Literally whatever happened to just a quick text. Seriously, my God. Now, going back to my history with dating... Let's unpack this one just real quick. I used to be a serial dater. Now let's unpack that real quick. And I know this is a common thing. I've talked to people about it before. It was mainly in high school where I could not be alone. I loved being in a relationship. I was only in a couple of relationships, but they were very long. But they also happened very quickly one after another. And I don't know if this was because I would mentally and emotionally break up with my boyfriend. And then however long later, we would actually break up. 
and I would already kind of be over them. And so I, I was just like mentally and emotionally ready to start talking to someone else. So it seemed like I was, you know, homie hopping around, but I was just, you know, mentally over it already as sad as it is to say. Maybe I've convinced myself that that is what I was doing or maybe not. You know, my mind plays a lot of tricks on me. I could just be convincing myself of that and I was just using guys to get over the previous guy, which also could be very, that could be very probable. And whenever I got to college, I was introduced to the infamous hookup culture where you're just tossed. You're disposable to people. There's one thing men want in college and that is to suck and fuck. Sorry, how to say it. And it's the truth though. I want to say 90% of guys in college are just there for the intimacy of it. And you can argue all you want with me, but again, title, argue with the wall. This is genuinely what I think, and I've had many men prove my point in my life. So, yeah. So, whenever I got to college, I was introduced to the hookup culture, and I had just gotten out of a relationship, which again, I was emotionally done with that. And so I moved on pretty quickly, um, which was not very wise of me. I understand that now, again, because I was able to sit with my thoughts and reflect on my actions. But in that moment, that was my last relationship, full, serious relationship I have been in. So college is not the way to go if you want to be in a relationship, to be honest, I've been introduced to the shittiest side of humanity when it comes to relationships. In college, people don't see you as your personality and how good you truly are. You give yourself to someone and, and then the next day you never hear from them again. Or you talk to someone and then you finally do a do and then it's poof, they're gone because they finally got what they wanted. So, and this has happened to me, you know, a couple of times and it's actually the shittiest feeling ever and it has made me lose a lot of faith in men for a while. It's given me major trust issues, not to get too deep with it, but it it really has. Being single has re-showed me to have more trust in myself and my gut and my intuition and more awareness of the red flags before things go down whenever I'm talking to someone. And in correlation with that, it kind of raises the standards a little bit which there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. Nothing wrong with having high standards because there is going to be someone out there that meets all your standards and checks all the boxes within reason. And there's just genuinely no reason to settle for someone who's going to gaslight you, for someone who is going to be mean to you whenever he's drinking. There's no reason to settle for someone who gives you, you know, 30% effort or you know he gives you 30% effort but when he gives you that 30% effort it's awesome and you can't forget about the 70% whenever he's slacking and you're doing all the heavy lifting that's not fair why would you want to be in a relationship with that because the 30% is good no no do better ladies and gentlemen but yeah going back to Being in my single era in college, it's taught me a lot. I've been in two little relationships um, in college. The first one, 
was where I settled hardcore. The second one I thought was, you know, I, I thought that was end game. But things happen and that's okay. And you just, you learn to move on and to keep trucking along. Again, being single has taught me a lot about those relationships specifically because those have been the most recent and I reflect on how he acted, how I acted, what I won't settle for, the red flags, the green flags, things like that are super important for your mental health, physical health maybe, and just your future self. So being single is one of the best self-care acts you can do for yourself. Genuinely. I am so passionate about that. I think everyone needs to be single for a hot minute. And like I'm talking single, not talking to anyone, not having situationships. You can date around if you really want to. But th- but there's something about being completely alone, which again, alone is not a bad thing. Being completely alone is 100% a healthy thing. I live alone, as you guys know. I live alone and best decision ever. Oh my god, I, I'm single and I live alone. No cats, just the occasional cockroach. Or I've also been getting some uh, hornets or wasps. I don't know the difference between the two, but I, I, I've killed about three of those. <laughs> Anyways, I have the occasional bug friend. But besides that, I literally just sit with my thoughts. I talk to myself way too much. And I cook, I clean, I watch movies, and I record these episodes, and I love it. Because I found things that bring me joy, rather than putting that joy into another person and forgetting about doing things for myself. Because in the past, I have completely forgotten about things that make me happy and having my alone time. And it was a huge struggle for me because I would become so invested with a relationship that I would forget about my friends and things that brought me happy and being alone because I would do the things that make me happy with the significant other that I was with and that defeats the purpose because yeah I am doing I am playing guitar I am painting but I'm doing it with someone else there's something about doing things that you love alone that makes it 10 times more special and I think that's a super important thing to do is to if you are in a relationship Keep doing those things that make you happy and do them alone. Because if before you were in a relationship, you were single and you found those things that make you happy, don't stop doing them. Now, if you're in a relationship and, you know, you're trying to figure out things that make you happy while being alone... That can be a little bit of a struggle because it's like if you're not really vibing with with anything, you're just like, oh, it's okay. I'll just like go hang out with my boyfriend. But whenever you're single, you're literally, again, you're forced to figure shit out. Figure out, you know, what you want to do to keep yourself busy instead of just going on Tinder or Hinge or whatever and finding someone to probably just dispose of you in a week because that's just the reality of it it sucks i get it it does suck but it's just a reality that we have to live with unfortunately so to wrap it up i just want to say that it is extremely helpful and healthy to be single there's nothing wrong with it i feel like it has a bad rep it has this bad connotation to it it's like oh i'm so lonely i'm so sad pity me i want to be in a relationship i want to be in a relationship no i think you need to learn how to be okay with yourself and be completely alone and create your own happiness before you can even fathom being in a relationship because when you're in a relationship that calls for a lot of effort of you know being there for your partner 
And if you're not there for yourself and you're relying on your partner to keep you happy and to keep you preoccupied, that inevitably will fail. And that's not fair for the other person or yourself because it's not healthy. But being single and taking time for yourself and becoming self-sufficient in the sense of creating your own happiness is one of the most important things and healthiest things you can do for yourself. So, yeah. (laughs) You learn to be okay with loneliness whenever you're alone and not in a relationship. And you just get a different side of being alone. It's actually quite a beautiful thing. And it's very, very exciting. There's a lot of room for activities. Whatever activities you are thinking of, to each their own. So, yeah, sorry this was kind of not as a funny, uplifting episode. But at the end of the day, this podcast is about me ranting about things that I'm very passionate about and that I believe in and I'm arguing my points. And this is one of them. It might not be, you know, me screaming about kids and how much I fucking hate them, which by the way, go listen to that episode. I get really heated. Had to pour a glass of wine for myself. But yeah, I I hope you I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you didn't, that's okay. You can always come back next week for probably something funnier. But This is one of my favorite things to talk about, and I hope you enjoyed listening to it. If you did, you can follow this podcast. You can rate it five stars, preferably. If not, that's all right, too. You can also follow the podcast on Instagram at argue with the wall, and the with is just a W. You could subscribe to the YouTube channel where I post these episodes as well. Um, what else can you do? Turn on the notifications. I think you can do that on all platforms, but I'm a Spotify girl, so I know for sure you can, uh, you can turn on notifications for whenever I upload, which is every Tuesday. So yeah, I very much hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you so much for listening, and 